I wanted to tell you about that. It's that simple. Let's go to MAL in Washington, D.C. Paul, what line are we on here? Line five, go ahead. What's your topic? Um, I just want, uh, the Supreme Court has ruled on this anger baby thing twice in history, and I'm really frustrated that it seems that the rule of law is just ignored. Trump was right in what he was saying. He may not enunciate it well, as well as he could, but the case law is there. There's two cases, went before the Supreme Court. Both of them ruled that being born on our soil doesn't necessarily guarantee you citizenship. That's right. And by the way, the United States is the only industrialized country to give blanket birthright citizenship to all children of illegal aliens. The only one. And there's certainly an open issue on the issue of the 14th Amendment. I agree with you on that. And I guess there's, not, <laughs> there's nothing more to say other than, Paul, let me send you a copy of Government Zero where I discuss it all in zero immigration. Because this is something that needs to be challenged. When Donald Trump becomes president, he must challenge this issue of the so-called anchor babies. And I want to tell you a side story about it if you think we're bad guys by talking about it. And I've told you the story before, but perhaps you never listened before. I am the son of an immigrant, which is a very important statement to begin with. But secondly, and going beyond myself, Canada. Canada has no anchor baby law. Do you know why? Because a Canadian of Chinese ancestry... Chinese Canadian, a minister, noticed something happening. He saw mainland Chinese coming in from China in their ninth month of pregnancy and delivering their babies in Canada in order to get an anchor baby in Canada. The Chinese Canadian said, We must stop this or the entire nation will become a, a, pro, a, a province of China. They eliminated the anchor baby law. That's liberal Canada. Not racism, but realism. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You can't use your knee-jerk answers to everything that comes up. Sometimes you actually have to T-H-I-N-K. You have to actually T-H-I-N-K. Many of you don't think. Knee-jerk liberalism. Knee-jerk liberals. Automatically you're a racist because you think about saving your own nation. There's a sound bite that I have to play right now, Robert. There's no better example of this kind of groupthink that I'm trying to alert you to than... Colonel Sanders' uh, son, Bernie Sanders, in clip 14. Go ahead, please. If people are concerned about electability, and Democrats should be very concerned, because we mm -hmm. certainly do not want to see some right-wing extremist uh, in the mm -hmm. White House, I think Bernie Sanders is the candidate. Right. We're doing much better with him. right-wing extremist. Bernie Sanders is a fanatical left-wing extremist. Don't you love how they change the entire language? Bernie Sanders is a, an extreme left-wing extremist. Hillary Clinton is a left-wing extremist. Barack Obama is a left-wing extremist. Nancy Pelosi is a left-wing extremist. The entire Democrat Party is filled with left-wing extremism. So anyone who stands up for America is now called a right-wing extremist in order to, paranoid, to put out paranoia in whose head. No, I don't buy it, not at all. It's Bernie Sanders who is the extremist. Anyone who stands against our borders against our language and against our culture is not only a left-wing extremist as far as i'm concerned they're committing sedition that's what i would say i go a little further ftl fort lauderdale joe you're up on the savage nation Savage, savage i've listened to donald trump's all his appearances on your show when he signs off and says i appreciate your support it, there's more there than meets the eye he really has read your books and I'll, I'll go so far as to say he's listened to your show for years. He gets it, borders language, culture. There's more to, he could listen to anybody. He's, in his debates, he's quoting, uh, bullet points that you have said for years. Uh, he better not pick Ted Cruz. Big mistake for VP. Not that he would take it. I think he's too much of an egomaniac, uh, Mr. Cruz, but he better pick someone with a little more of an ethnicity bent, if you know what I mean. No, I understand. You, you have a good point there because he has to appeal to a, uh, a wider audience than his own base. And that's normally what people do with a VP candidate. And God knows how many opportunities there are out there for a, an ethnic woman war hero, for example. I mean, I'll come up with some names that no one's ever thought about. We happen to have some conservative ethnic minorities who were swept into office not too long ago, but no one hears of them because they were put at the back of the bus by the old Republican Party. I'll give you an example. There's a wonderful young lady 
in Salt Lake City. No one knows her name. She's an African-American. She is super conservative. There's a wonderful woman in Florida, an Iraq war veteran. No one knows her name. They put her at the back of the Republican bus. They would make superb candidates, but we haven't heard from them, have we? No. And um, no. he needs to be a little creative and don't pick the obvious. Uh, Cruz is a bad, bad choice, but get down here to Florida. I'm going to take you up for a beer. <laughs> okay, thanks for that call. I don't drink beer in the winter. <laughs> I have different alcoholic tastes according to the uh, the time of the year. Right now, I'm not drinking anything. I'm on a diet. Oh, God, I started a new diet. Don't talk about that. My New Year's resolution, everything I love is either illegal, immoral, or fattening. Remember that sign from the 50s? I remember, you know, the men in my father's generation had little tiny basements in their houses, and they had little bars, some of them. I wish we did. We didn't. Ours was an unfinished basement. But those who had a finished basement often put little bars in that little bar signs. And one of them was, everything I love is either illegal, immoral, or fattening. I never even understood it when I was a kid. Unfortunately, I understand it well right now. Back in a minute. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. The politicians can pretend it's something else, but Donald Trump calls it radical Islamic terrorism. That's why he's calling for a temporary shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until we can figure out what's going on. He'll quickly cut the head off ISIS and take their oil. And he'll stop illegal immigration by building a wall on our southern border that Mexico will pay for. We will make America great again. Very nice. Very, very nice. Now, tomorrow, um, the con man in the White House gives his State of the Union address, which I cannot watch. I don't mind listening to it, but I can't take the fake up every second, the applause. We have a, a nation of dumbbells. You know, let him say his speech, then applaud. Every second, if he utter, belches, that every Schmendrick stands up. Every two minutes, they're standing and sitting and standing and sitting. And then the walking in, it's crazy. The padding and the shaking, I don't, you know, it's stupid. It makes me embarrassed to be an American to see it. And it's not, it didn't start with him. You know, why don't we grow up already as a nation? Let's have a parliamentary debate be between the president and someone who really can debate him without notes in front of them. Then maybe we'd have a chance as a country. But anyway, I'm not going to watch it. I'll play a little bit of it because you know already what he's going to do. And uh, then Thursday, another debate now. This one's going to be where, Robert? Another Republican debate? I'm sorry, I wouldn't even go. If I were the Republicans, I'd stop appearing. Every time they debate, they open themselves up to more attacks by the Soviet, the Soviets and the media. Where's Hillary in the debate? How, how about letting her debate somebody who, who could really take her on? About the missing emails, about the Arab Spring, about the flood of refugees. Is she embarrassed by what she's done to Europe? No, not one word. That's all. So that's why we have to keep our eyes open. I wouldn't go if I were him. Well, I know many of you leave the show right now. A couple of markets leave, a couple of markets join. I have another big hour here on the Savage Nation. We'll continue to talk about news, views, and reviews. And if you missed the Donald Trump interview today, it could be listened to anytime on michaelsavage.com. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Shut up, you disgusting, pill-popping, sexual deviant scum. I want to do this monologue and then go into hiding, okay? Not even Sean Penn will find me. Snitch. Yeah, right. Ricky Gervais, uh, British comedian, uh, cross between Benny Hill and Dean Martin, I guess. Atheist, anti-family guy. You could see how he got where he is. I mean, he fits right in with Hollywood.
But, okay, put that aside. Some of his uh, humor was funny, especially when he attacked them because no one else would dare do it. He did a joke on, uh, I'm doing news views and reviews. We had Donald Trump on. If you missed it, it's on michaelsavage.com. And I'll cover all the news of the day, believe me, including the New York Times just came out saying Germany should close the borders, conduct mass deportations, and Merkel must resign. I can't believe this. Now, I don't know who wrote the, the op-ed, but they're right, 100%. Here's another one. You want some more breaking news from the independent UK? The terror group ISIS has released an English language manual telling terrorists how to avoid security services. They said, wear aftershave, trim your beards, and wear Christian crosses while plotting new Paris-style attacks. Thank you, liberals. Bring in a million of them. So let's say 10,000 of them will have trim, be <coughs> trim beards and be wearing a cross. <clears throat> Sorry, something in my throat. I want to play another one from last night against the church about a movie. I don't know the name of it. Play it, Robert. So what's happened this last year in this crazy business we called show? The excellent Spotlight has been nominated. Yeah. The, uh, the Catholic dogs. Church are furious about the film as it exposes the fact that 5% of all their priests have repeatedly molested children and been allowed to continue to work without punishment. Roman Polanski called it the best date movie ever. Right up there, alley. That works for Harvey Weinstein crowd. I'm sure Larry David couldn't stop laughing. I'm sure Larry David uh, choked on his, uh, on his drink at that one. I mean, anything that attacks the church is right up there, alley. Yeah, real good jokes. Anyway, here we are, news, views, and reviews. I didn't get to the movie I wanted to talk about, Joy, with Jennifer Lawrence. I don't know what I did with the paperwork on it. It's, it's worth talking about. So let's play the trailer for Joy. And by the way, I recommend you do not see it because she's such a big leftist. I'd rather you not go. I mean, thank God the movie is bombing, but it's a good movie. Let's uh, listen to the trailer to Joy. I want you to remember something because a lot of times people get nice things and they start to think differently. We got here from hard work, patience, and humility. So I want to tell you, don't ever think that the world owes you anything, because it doesn't. The world doesn't owe you a thing. I was valedictorian in high school. I got into a fancy right, college. I don't, the trailer's no good. It's about a poor Long Island housewife, a real story. Uh, Miracle Mop creator Joy Mag Magano. And it's by a, a film team that I, you know, I came to really love in American Hustle. Director David O. Russell and the actress is Jennifer Lawrence. There are other fabulous actors in the, in the movie. Robert De Niro is in it. Virginia Madsen is in it. Uh, people you may not know are in it, but they're really good. And the important part, part of the movie is that it's about a poor woman who overcomes great obstacles, great obstacles to uh, survive as a, a new businesswoman. True grit, refusal never to take no for an answer, overcoming every obstacle that any new business owner would ever face from people who say no to you and to manufacturers who steal your patent. It's really worth seeing for anyone trying to start a business so you know what kind of risks uh, are involved. I mean, many people look at people who are rich and say they don't deserve it or they stole it or, I, you know, they know somebody. Well, no, that's not how it works. Usually it's from fighting every day of your life. And after you get where you are, continuing to fight every day of your life. It's as simple as that. That's the hard scrabble system of capitalism. And frankly, it's glorified in the movie Joy. Teddy loved it very much. 855-400-7282. Now let's go right to the callers on uh, the Savage Nation. Stephen on WJR is not a fan of Donald, Donald Trump. Stephen, go ahead, please. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to challenge the notion that Trump is a conservative, first of all. I know he's running on the Republican ticket, but as a constitutional conservative myself, I just look at his, at least what he says his ideology is, and I really don't see much overlap between his and my own. All right. What part of Donald Trump don't you like? I don't like the rhetoric that he'll just do anything to get done what needs to get done. A lot of what he thinks needs to get done, I actually agree with. I just don't like the idea that the checks and balances that are part of our great nation, it just sounds like he'd be willing to just trample right over it just to get done what, frankly... Well, here's, a, here's our problem. Obama has trampled on our checks and balances and taken us where we are, hasn't he? No, I agree, yes. 
So why shouldn't we use the same system to reverse the course we 